Today's video is sponsored by Paperlike, which makes writing or drawing with any Apple Pencil on any iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris, and today we're talking about the iPad Pro with iPad OS versus the MacBook Pro with Mac OS Catalina. Now, I don't know how many iPad Pro versus MacBook Pro videos we've ended up doing over the last several years, quite a few, and I'll link them up down below. Today, I wanna do something a little bit different. I wanna focus more on the new software because that has really changed, I think, especially on the iPad side. But Mac OS Catalina came out and there's some new stuff to check out there too. So if you're sitting there wondering, which one of these should I get? What would fit my style the best? Which one can I rely on? And which one would I be happy with? Which one would I not have any regrets getting versus the other? Then this is the video for you. Oh, and I guess I could take these out. I always have my AirPods in before I'm getting ready while I'm getting all set up just to like amp up and get ready to talk to you guys. Can I just give you a little observation before we get into it? I feel like with these software updates, iPadOS and macOS Catalina, it's almost like we're reversing things. We're turning the tables. Before the conversation was always, how is the iPad becoming more Mac-like? And in many ways, this round, I feel like it's turning into how is the Mac becoming more iPad-like? I'll tell you what I mean. Number one, things like screen time are coming now to the Mac, but they started on iOS and with iPadOS. Or we also have things like iTunes getting split apart into various media apps, like was always the case. That's how it always was on the iPad. I just found that kind of interesting. Maybe as we go through this video, you can tell me if you think that too. But let's get things started by talking about multitasking because this is kind of where the rubber meets the road, right? You're productive, you're trying to get stuff done. How does multitasking work now on iPadOS versus Catalina? Well, back in the days <laughs> when the iPad actually just ran iOS before iPadOS, multitasking was always a point of contention for a lot of people. It's like it didn't do enough or it didn't do it the right way in terms of running multiple apps at the same time. And so now with iPad OS, we have slide over, which is new, which is cool. We also have apps in multiple spaces, which is very cool. Probably my favorite multitasking new feature. And we also have app expose. If you're still kind of catching up on what all that stuff is, then go check out my iPad OS review and all my iPad OS content. I'm gonna link it up down below for you. But over on the Mac side of things in Catalina, as in Mojave, as in <laughs> Mac OS going way back, you have fine control over how you want Windows and therefore apps to function and lay out and interact with each other. Like you can control every aspect of it. But I was thinking about it. Would I really want, and you think about this too, that level of fine control over Windows on the iPad? I'm sure some people will, but for me, I don't think that I would. I'm not sure that I would, like on a Surface or whatever, right? Because the iPad seems very optimized right now, no matter how you use it. It's just going to work how it works, and it's very simple. And the apps are gonna take up the full screen or half the screen or come over and slide over. And that's how it works. And I don't know that I would want to like be sitting there rearranging a bunch of different apps, trying to fit them just perfectly. It's simpler and it's easier the way that it is on iPad OS. In fact, I think multitasking on iPad OS, while not perfect, while it definitely needs some additions and some tweaks, has come far enough now with iPad OS that it can do what you need to do. You can be really productive in this environment to the point where I think it's just gonna come down to familiarity. If you're more familiar with the Mac and how uh, multitasking works over there, I think you're gonna prefer it. But if you spend time with the iPad or more time with the iPad than the Mac, I think you're going to end up preferring multitasking there. That's my theory. Because really, is one objectively better than the other right out of the box? I don't know, that's really hard to say. Of course, once you start adding in different peripherals and stuff, it's a different story. Like if you want a huge 49 inch ultra wide uh, screen for your Mac, well, you can fit all kinds of stuff on there. That's gonna increase your productivity. In fact, I do want that, and hopefully that video is coming sometime in the near future. But really, just beyond that familiarity, each platform, each operating system does have its own small advantages. I wanna give you two examples. The first is Siri shortcuts. Right now, if you want to do more with Siri, including with automations, which is new in this update, 
then you have to do that on an iOS device or you can do it with your iPad on iPad OS. That's not something you can currently do on the Mac with Catalina, although it looks like it is something that is coming in the future. But on the Mac side, without going into a thousand different examples, one cool thing that you can do that you can't do on the iPad is authenticate things with your Apple Watch. So maybe if you're going to install a new uh, app and you wanna approve it, double tap right here and you've authenticated it. That's gonna work for a few different ways of authenticating things. That's pretty cool and that's something that you can't do with your iPad right now. All right, so let's look at home screens because that's where everything kind of gets started on each of these devices. On the Mac, you turn it on, you log in, and what do you have? A picture background, you got the option to have files uh, over here on the side, and your drives, and you got your dock, and you're getting to work. On the iPad, it's very similar. You turn it on, it's much faster, and you unlock it, and you've got a picture background, and you've got an array of all your apps. But with iPadOS, you can slide over and pin some widgets, which I find very cool. Now over on the Mac, those widgets aren't and can't be on your home screen. They're a click away. You have to enable those, pull them over onto the screen. It's very similar to how you used to pull widgets over with a swipe on uh, iOS 12. And you know what? On iOS 12, on the iPad, I never used widgets enough very much because they were out of sight, out of mind. But now with iPad OS, they're right in front of me, right on my home screen. And you guys know, I'm sorry if you're sick of me saying this, but they're my jumping off point. And so I can get into MindNode and I can get into drafts and I can get into Apple Notes and all my productivity stuff with one tap, go right where I want, shortcuts, that's a big thing. And I can't do that as easily or quickly on the Mac. So when it comes to the home screen, I really, really like what iPadOS has going on. In fact, I think I like that better and I would love to see some sort of uh, widget better integration over on the Mac side. Okay, so if we're talking about software and we're talking about iPadOS versus Catalina, we really can't have this discussion without talking about apps, some key apps. And I guess we might as well start with those media apps because that's gonna be a huge part of how you interact with your Mac moving forward because iTunes is gone. Apple got rid of iTunes and they broke up all the little pieces. So now you have a music app, standalone, a podcast app, standalone, and a TV app, standalone. Now here's the thing. These days I'm usually using my Mac at my desk. I don't really take it with me anywhere. Maybe sometimes when I travel, my iPad is just more portable. So when I'm at my desk, am I listening to podcasts using this podcast app in Catalina? Not really, because I just throw in my earphones and they're already connected to my uh, iPhone and that's how I listen, using Overcast. Now the TV app, is that something that I use when I'm at my desk and I'm using my Mac? Not really, because if I'm gonna watch TV, including Apple TV Plus, when it comes out, I'm gonna give it a try. That's gonna be on my TV, primarily, or on my tablet, right? It's gonna be one of those. It's never gonna be my Mac, for me. But what's actually cool, what's actually interesting is the new standalone music app. To me, that's something that I like, that I appreciate on the Mac, that I'm definitely using and will continue to use. Whenever I got into iTunes in the past, it was always for music, only for music, and maybe to sync stuff. Now it's so much simpler, it's so much more straightforward, it's so much better, there's just no clutter. It's just your music and your playlists and music discovery, that's great. Now I haven't mentioned the iPad for a while in this video, I've been just talking about the Mac, why? Because this is exactly how, what the Mac is doing, this is how the iPad's been set up for a while now. You have a separate podcast player, you have a separate music player, you have a separate uh, TV app now. So in this regard, the Mac is really just catching up to the iPad. Now, which one do I prefer listening to all this stuff and accessing? I like the touch bar actually on the Mac in this one instance for controlling music especially. Like that is so much more convenient than using the iPad, even with iPad OS, and Apple's default pro keyboard, right? It doesn't have any function keys, so to actually control the music, you gotta get back into the music app. It's slightly less convenient than being able to use the touch bar in whatever app you're in to control your media. Now let's talk about something that's crucial, that's super interesting as part of this conversation, and that is Safari, which just got a huge and very needed update and upgrade 
for iPadOS. Right now, what they're calling it is desktop class Safari on your iPad. Previously, this was a huge sticking point. You couldn't access like Google Docs and make it work very well. You couldn't access Squarespace and make that work, make changes to your websites. And there's several other, um, I think everybody out there has some sort of service or web app, whether you're a student or a business person or just at your job, some kind of an app that you couldn't access before and do and control and make work with iOS 12 on the iPad. That's basically fixed now with the desktop class Safari. This is a huge, huge thing. Now, of course, Safari on the Mac, it never had a problem. It's like the reverse of what we were just talking about with the media app. Safari on Mac was always awesome. And now iPad is actually the one playing catch up, but catch up, it basically did. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, the Safari gap has basically been closed when it comes to iPad OS versus Safari on Catalina. I mean, all the core stuff that you're gonna need to do is basically there now with the iPad. So it should no longer be a sticking point in your buying decision. Now, the last thing that has to do with apps that I wanna mention is Project Catalyst. Project Catalyst, formerly known as Marzipan, is something that Apple put out there for developers so that they could easily get the uh, apps that they already developed for iOS, for the iPad, over and running good, looking good, running good on the Mac. So it's a way to bring all that huge catalog of apps from the iOS universe over to the Mac. So once again, this is what I'm talking about. This is the Mac sort of playing catch up to what was already available over on the iPad. Now I think the question is for this video, which one would I enjoy using for certain apps? Um, a couple examples. There's Asphalt 9, the very popular racing game that's always available on iOS. That is coming over thanks to Project Catalyst to the Mac. Would I rather play it on the Mac? or on the iPad? Simple answer, I think probably the Mac. I think for a racing game, that would just be a better, more fun experience. A little bit bigger screen, maybe the keyboard and mouse control. I can't download it yet. It's not available to try, but that's my guess. Another example of a Project Catalyst app is the Twitter app. There used to be a Twitter Mac app, an official one, it's gone. So what Twitter's doing now with Project Catalyst is bringing their iOS version, that code base, taking it and putting it on the Mac with some tweaks to make it more Mac-like. And I think honestly for Twitter, I enjoy using that when I'm mobile more than on the desktop. It just seems like a mobile thing for me. So I guess the long and the short of this Project Catalyst stuff is it's good if you're a Mac user, you're gonna be getting a lot more stuff and that's the end of it. The iPad basically already had all that stuff. Let's talk really quick about file storage because yes, we have external file storage on iPad OS now, and that is very cool. I'm thankful to Apple for including that, but it's not as robust as it needs to be right now. So for instance, if I import some footage into uh, an external drive, let's say from my camera that's hooked up to my iPad, well, guess what? I don't even get something as simple as a spinning wheel or a progress bar to let me know how far along that import is. So there's some little interface things that we're still missing, even though we have the technical capability that until those are resolved, um, that's gonna be the new sticking point for a lot of people, I think, like Safari used to be. And so that is something that I'm now really hopeful Apple fixes and addresses in the next update. Of course, on the Mac, it's ridiculous. You can do everything that you ever want to do with external storage. It's not even a problem, so. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about software, and that was the big push of this video because that's what's so brand new and shiny right now is iPadOS and Catalina. But I do want to mention briefly some hardware stuff that I haven't really covered before in the many comparison videos that I've done. Number one, I want to start with hubs because I think Hubs, as I was thinking about it, is a really good metaphor for comparing these two devices. If you look at something like the hyperdrive for the iPad, it's a hub, it works, it gives you extra ports, but if you look at something like this brand new Stego hub from 12 South, which they were kind enough to send, and I'll link up down below because it's really cool, that gives you more ports. And so that's how I kind of feel about iPad and Mac stuff. You can do everything basically on the iPad differently in many cases that you can do on the Mac, but the Mac just lets you do a little bit more. Like with hubs, I feel like four ports often, it's not even enough for me <laughs> for USB-Cs on the Mac. So to only have one on the iPad, and then when you plug in something like the hyperdrive, it still has a USB-C, but if you have to use power, it's already gone. So you can't use another USB-C accessory while you're charging up. 
that's frustrating. That is a limitation. That's something that you at least get more of and a better situation with on the Mac. I also wanna mention input devices because this is an interesting statement here. Of course, on the Mac, you can only use your mouse, basically. On the iPad, you can use your Apple Pencil or another stylus, and now you can use a mouse, even though it's just an accessibility feature for now. So to put that a little bit differently, the iPad can use the Mac's input device, the mouse, along with its own input device, the Apple Pencil, but the Mac can only use its own, the mouse. It can't use the Apple Pencil. Well, sort of. See, we got this new feature in Catalina called Sidecar, and I plan on making a whole video about it. So if you're excited about that, you wanna see it, give me a thumbs up in this video, and definitely drop a comment saying you wanna see that sooner than later, um, so I can prioritize. But Sidecar lets you use your iPad as a second display, and I think it's, it's different, and I think it's a little bit cooler than previous options that were out there. It has some unexpected features, but it's very low latency, even wirelessly, and it lets you use your Apple Pencil with your Mac. But you have to have both an iPad and a Mac to make it work. You see what I'm saying? In just a minute, I'm gonna to try to wrap this up with some conclusions and recommendations to help you make that right buying decision or be okay with the decision, the direction you're heading. But first, here's a quick word from our sponsor. If you own an iPad or you're looking to get one soon, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound more like using real paper when you're working with an Apple Pencil. Paperlike actually gives you more control when you're writing or drawing thanks to the paper-like resistance that it offers. And yeah, it really makes a big difference. Plus, it reduces glare and fingerprints, which who wouldn't want that? Paperlike is great for anyone who wants to use apps like Apple Notes or Notability or Procreate or Affinity Photo, among many others. Not to mention the new sidecar feature coming to macOS Catalina. When you place an order, you'll get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories, along with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go ahead and order yourself a paper like using that link down in the description. Okay, so based on this new software, let's talk about which of these devices and operating systems, iPadOS or Catalina, is best for your style. And maybe for the first time ever, we're not talking about is the iPad enough of a Mac, but is the Mac enough of an iPad, which is kind of weird, kind of different. I feel like we've really flipped that up. My first answer to you is that actually, and I know this isn't what you came here for this video to hear, they're better together because of Sidecar, most importantly. So if you can get both, get both. But if you need to pick between them, that's what we're really here to discuss. Here, I think, is a very, very, very simple answer. If you're a power user, then get a Mac. You need a Mac. And how do you know if you're a power user? If you have to ask, you're not a power user. <laughs> it's that simple. And I think that just makes this a super easy decision for most people. Just from a software standpoint, I do feel like iPadOS is generally simpler. It's easier to wrap your mind around and to make things happen. But as part of that, you know, you don't have as much control over every little thing but that's okay. You can still do what you need to do, and maybe you like doing it better that way. Again, I really do think it's gonna come down to what you're most familiar with. If you spend a lot of time in an iPad, you're going to like it, adapt to it, and the Mac might feel a little bit weird to you. You're coming over and trying to poke on your Mac screen, because that's what you're used to. Honestly, the iPad keeps getting better and better. If they bring in some more pro apps, like if Photoshop, real Photoshop ever ships, um, if Final Cut Pro comes to the iPad, if they nail down their file storage, if external displays get a lot more useful in most apps rather than just mirroring, if they offer a different view and let you do more, um, there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline for iPads that make them very exciting. Anyways, this continues to be a very interesting series comparing the iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro and things like this, these kinds of updates just keep that kind of rivalry fresh. And uh, so if you want more of this, make sure to subscribe. I still have lots of betas to be testing for watch OS, TV OS, my CarPlay video is still coming out. Plus we got some other new stuff in the works. I think you're gonna wanna stick around for it. So make sure you're subscribed, turn on the bell so you get those notifications. Make sure to follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.